In our previous tutorial, we made a simple function to hide all rows with a specific target value in it in Google Sheets with our Google Apps Script. At the end of the tutorial, I explained that this function may not be ideal for a larger data set and may slow things down, and we have a better way. In this tutorial, we are going to expand on our previous function and make it much more efficient by combining different values together. So what do I mean by this? Let's just go over to our larger data set here and hit Control F and just find all the koalas. So in the previous tutorial, every time there was a koala found here, we would hide the row that the koala was found on essentially making a call to the spreadsheet each time that we do this. We can make this script more efficient by batching up these ranges. So for example, here to here could just be one range call. And likewise, this range here to here could be another range call, another range call, another range call here. These two could be batched together. We've got another batch set here that could be batched together and so on. So effectively reducing the amount of calls back to the Google Sheet. Now there's a bit of setup already available for you in the starter sheet and you can access that from the link in the description below. So grab that sheet, get it up and open and open up the App Script IDE and we'll get started from there. Okay, so you should be in the App Script IDE now. So right now you should have this hide all rows with values version two here. And essentially all I've done is deleted out a section in here that allowed us to choose between is hide, true or false, and then either hide the rows or show the rows. Just to briefly cover what's going on, we've got a runsies function down here that will run this hide all rows version two. And then inside this, we're grabbing this active spreadsheet here and the sheet name here, which is going to be this animals hide lots. And then we're using the text finder class to search for all the koalas in the range and get an array of all those koalas. From there, we're going to loop through all the occurrences of koalas and their cells and just get the row number here. And that's where we've left off. As we're iterating through each row, we need to be able to check the next row and see if there is a koala uh, value in that row. If there is, we want to add it to that range of values. So what we'll do is we'll create a let variable here, one that can change, and we're going to call it row range. This will be a placeholder variable here, and it's going to be an object. And that object is going to contain the start row, and that will be currently equal to null. And then the number of rows from the start row. So oh, num row. Z and that's also going to be equal to none, null. And we'll update that as we iterate through all of our occurrences here. Cool. So one more thing we need to add into this all occurrences is we can also add in an index here. So it's going to count the number for each iteration starting from zero. So zero, one, two, three, as we index through each of the cells. Okay, so now we're going to create a if statement and our if statement is going to first be, so if, if the index is equal to zero, then we just want to do some basic admin on it. So if it's, if we're on the first in iteration, so if on first iteration, which will be this one up here, row eight, then we want to set this row range start row to the first number. So we're going to say row range dot start row is equal to the row. And for us, that will be eight. And then we would just want to add one to the number of rows just to make sure that we've got at least one in the range here. So row range again equals num rows, and that's going to be equal to one. Cool, so that's only on the first time that we iterate, iterate through all of these occurrences of Koala. Okay, so next, we want to identify any time that we've got a double up on the row. So for example, you can see on line 38 here, we've got Koala and Koala. And then up here, we've got a couple as well, 19 and 24, there's double ups on these two. So we don't really want to do anything the second time we see that. How are we going to say that as a statement in here? So let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and put a space in here first, make it pretty. I'll say else if 
and then we can say our last row range row. Oh, I said to spell it wrong. There we go. Fix that one up. Nice. So after the last row range row is minus one is equal to the row, then we're just going to return this uh, for each loop. Our start row and number of rows combined is always going to uh, display the next row down. So we just need to subtract one here and see if there is a match between the two. So if we've got, for example, this one, the start row is 24 and it's one row deep. So that's 25 and then minus one is 24. And then the next value in the row is also 24. So those two are a match. So we just return that, do nothing because we don't want to waste hits back to the spreadsheet. Okay, so our next if statement will be else if, and in this if statement, we want to see if it's the next consecutive item. So the one, next one underneath. So let's find a good example. So we, we've got here on line 16, we've got Koala. And then, so if Koala's on line 16, we can say if our last row range row is equal to, and then on the next iteration, we were looking at this one, which says 17, the row will be 17. So equal to row. And so last row range row, so it'd be 16 plus one is 17, and is equal to 17, yes then that's correct. If we iterate through again to this next section here, there's nothing, but the next one is Koala here. So that one would be correct. Okay, so all we need to do here is we need to add one to our row numbers. So row range dot num rows, and that will add one to the number of rows for our current row range. Now, if we're on our last uh, if we're on the last iteration of this loop, uh, we want to return it and hide our ranges up here. So let's create a, a internal if statement in here. So if the index or IDX here is equal to all occurrences dot length minus one, then we want to run the hide range function. And inside that, we want to put this row range here. Cool. So that's that statement complete. Nice. And then lastly, we need a else statement here. This will meet all the conditions where the next found value is not in the row below. So for example, this last koala here on line 19, and then the next one is going to be here. So this will be a whole new uh, row range setup. So before we create the whole new row range setup, we need to send off this previous row range setup. So first we need to run the hide range, row range here, and then uh, we need to set the new row range, which is exactly the same as this one up here. So just copy this and paste it in there. And again, we have the same statement if we've iterated through to the last found cell. So I'm going to pop that in here and down and just whack it in there. Oh, let's go control tab to bring it back a bit. Uh, let's tab that up a bit there and tab that one in as well. I think we're good now. Cool. And one just final thing we'll do is we will call the spreadsheet app and flush the spreadsheet. So essentially it's telling Google Apps Script that run all these services and see if you can batch them together and then send them over to the sheet in one big lump. And then once you're done with this, let's just flush and complete that, that session and move on to another session of accessing the spreadsheet. Okay, we'll hit save there. I think we're good. I don't think we have made any mistakes. Fingers crossed, we'll go ahead and hit run. And we can see that everything has been hidden and we can't see any little green koalas popping up here. Let's just open one sample up and we can see all our koalas are inside there. That's pretty cool. We've got another single one there. What about this? Let's find another larger range. Let's go down. This one here. There we go. There's another bunch of koalas. Okay, let's uh, test our 
unhide our show. So set this to false and hit run. And that unhid everything well. And then our last test would be to just not include this because it's an optional argument and we'll hit run to hide. Okay, and it hit everything again. Cool. So in our next tutorial, we are going to use the in our next tutorial, we are going to use the spreadsheet API or in Google Apps Script, we call this the uh, Sheets Advanced Service to do the exact same thing. Uh, there are some benefits of that over this. This one tends to be a bit more performant, but if you're using a, if you're creating a large batch operation and including all sorts of other formatting and changes to the sheet, then this approach might be better for you. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, please click that like button. And you, if you want to see more tutorials like this, please subscribe and hit that notification bell for when the next tutorial comes out. Until next time.